you asked how big the area of the fulgration, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, the fulgrated area, when we look inside, the trigon, actually, it is maybe two centimeters square. Mm -hmm. So, if I can uh, say, so the bladder is totally like this big, mm -hmm. which is not very huge. This is the bladder. And we full, the fulgrated area is that one. Mm -hmm. So it's <laughs> like a uh, like this one, a, okay. a fingertip. This one. So maybe this large area and totally the bladder neck. Mm -hmm. We fulgrate the, all the bladder neck and the trigon area, and it's very interesting. And this area is always uh, the affected part. Next to it, the bladder wall is always normal. Mm -hmm. Why it's not disseminating from this part to this part? Or sometimes this part, the anterior bladder wall, which comes into contact with the trigon when the bladder is empty, sometimes this part is also affected. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, the inflammation here passes to the, that part if the inflammation stays too long. Then all the bladder may be affected like interstitial cystitis. Mm -hmm. In your case, bladder was healthy. Mm -hmm. So I think embryologically this part is a different part because this is the connection part of the outside tissues and the inner organs. This is the inner side organ and urethra is coming from outside. So embryologically, this is a different tissue. Mm -hmm. And it is always prone to get some tissue change. And the tissue change from normal bladder cells to outside cells actually. Mm -hmm. When we fulgrate, it's very interesting. The healing tissue comes from the neighboring tissues from that part. And they heal like a bladder mucosa, the normal mucosa. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they heal from the next neighboring tissues, it never gets infected again. Mm -hmm. I see many cases after my fulgration, after the fulgrations of other centers, when I go inside this part, is the fulgrate part heals. And its mucosa now is very similar to the mucosa of the normal bladder. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some remaining parts around. I fulgrate these parts if there is some symptoms. But the trigon, when we fulgrate, like you ask, it's a this size area, it heals like a normal bladder wall, normal bladder cells. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will be resistant to uh, future infections, mm -hmm. hopefully. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned the interstitial cystitis because in the UK um, that seems to be if you don't respond to short course of antibiotics, mm -hmm. I was slapped with that label. Um, that's why we came here because a urologist in the UK that was on our you know normal health system yeah. just said, "Have you heard of painful bladder syndrome?" Yeah. And that would have been my label for life. Yeah. Then and that would have been what I would have had to have lived with, which is why you just start scrambling to find other options because you don't want to, you know, live like that forever. Yeah. But um, so, what is in your view? What is the difference between an embedded infection and this interstitial cystitis, painful bladder diagnosis that a lot of women, like for example, I'm just on a Facebook group there, and if you don't research yourself. There's so, so many women who just believe that you can't drink alcohol, can't have coffee, can't have spicy food, can't have sex, can't, you know, just debilitate themselves because yeah. they think this is their, you know, diagnosis. So what would you say is your difference between those two? Yeah, actually, I believe there is some connection between interstitial cystitis and chronic cystitis. Mm -hmm. In interstitial cystitis, the bladder capacity is decreased and it's a very difficult situation. Mm. And when I do uh, cystoscopy, with normal cystoscopy pre water pressure, mm -hmm. the bladder uh, cracks, mm -hmm. tears happen, and bladder uh, bleeds from everywhere. Right. This is an interstitial cystitis or a chronic pro bladder problem, mm -hmm. very chronic pro bladder problem. This may be caused by chronic cystitis mm -hmm. or without chronic cystitis. It may come out for other reasons, immun immunological reasons. But if the lady has the beginning of the disease is with infections, if she had some infection then cured with the antibiotics, then had infection again cured with the antibiotics, 
So if she had some response to antibiotics, so it is related to the infections. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it has some connection, some bind with the, some relation with the infections. So this lady is curable. Mm. But if the lady uh, has no response to antibiotics, it has no relation to infections, it started one day, her bladder capacity decreased, and she goes to toilet too oftenly, and no antibiotics is helping her anytime. This is a pure interstitial cystitis. Okay. So, uh, blood, bladder fulguration, liter, in the literature it says half of the patients, uh, the uh, fulguration also helps, mm -hmm. but only 50%, half of them. And many of them, I see many cases, the bladder capacity is too much decreased and it is irreversible mm -hmm. for some of them. Uh, if, if they have no response for anything, they have to try fulguration. The response is not as good as a chronic cystitis, but they have to try. So when the bladder cracks in their bladders, we fulgurate the teared parts, mm -hmm. to try to initiate a tissue response, tissue healing, mm -hmm. but it's only 50% helpful. Okay. If the capacity is too low, if it is irreversible, they really need a bladder change. Okay. It's, uh, it is the extreme end of our disease. I believe if chronic cystitis is untreated, it goes to interstitial cystitis. cystitis. Okay. But as you, in a very short time, understand, urology world is making a great mistake. Mm. When they see the, the patient has some symptoms and there is no bacterial production in the urine culture, they say, okay, you are not cystitis, you are not infective cystitis, you are interstitial cystitis, which is not true. Right. So if the, if the lady has a good capacity, bladder is uh, normally filled, no, it's not an interstitial cystitis. And she has some, uh, some uh, uh, help from the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. it's, it is mo mostly related to infection. Okay. So the thing is here, our uh, leukoplakia site, even there is no infection anymore, no bacteria, nothing. When the urine touched to this, this part, mm. she has the symptoms. Right. And when she goes to the doctor, there is no bacteria. No. The, blood, the bladder has like an ulcer in the stomach. It is always having some irritation. And when doctors see there is no infec infection in the urine culture, they say, okay, no, this is not infection. This is interstitial stats. Mm. So some of these ladies, have the problem in the trigon. Mm. But some of them, the real interstitial stasis, have the problem in all of the bladder okay, wall. Yeah. And okay. unfortunately, this problem, chronic cystitis, also disseminates into the bladder at some point. Mm -hmm. If it, uh, I had some, yesterday I had a lady, she had the disease for 28 years, and it, it, it didn't disseminate it. It stayed in the trigon forever, and we treated it, it's finished. She came for the first year follow-up. She is full happy. Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't move into the interstitial status, but there is some connection. We still don't know who from chronic status passed into the interstitial status. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, but they are two different diseases. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Just because that just seems to be what yeah, the, jump, the, the jump is, even within like six months like me that's what they've just said that i had yeah. um so yeah um if anything was to come back on i'm gonna ring my doctor and say um I'm, i want to do cultures every four weeks yeah um if something was to come back on a culture would i use the same antibiotics i use for the first 20 days yeah just use those all ones that i've got at home yeah, maybe. this is our routine we use the same antibiotic for, for the initial 20 days yep. then the, uh, regarding the cultures we can change the cultures. Uh, sometimes if there is too much symptoms and we cannot address what what's going on we can do the uh, most sensitive more sensitive cultures okay uh, like microgene, microgene testing yeah. and the focus testing mm. such okay. things okay because that it was interesting because my my first focus test I haven't had positive culture, positive um, or susceptibility bacteria test and show up on any of my tests. Mm -hmm. And the reason we came was just purely based off that one yeah. picture. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll, I'll make sure I follow up with the testing as well. Yeah. Um, but I think that's everything I wanted to ask. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that's it. It's a low and heart disease. It's yeah. not easy to uh, clear your mind totally. And all of my patients who totally cured, they cannot believe at the initial months they will totally believe it's very difficult psychological situation yeah uh, well, i hope it will be the end for you forever yeah. thank you me too okay okay um.